math metal. Um, there's there's deathcore, there's metalcore, there's black metal, there's um, sim cool. there's there's symphonic death metal, there's melodic death metal, um, thrash. There's there's thrash. There's speed metal. There's there's metalcore. There's grindcore. There's sludge metal. <laughs> um, I'm not kidding, guys. It's there's, just starting to sound stupid lot, right there's now. There's a lot of subgenres, <laughs> and and. What's going on, everybody? Mark here from Back to the Media, coming to you live with another Rants and Rotations number three. 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 We are going to uh, show you guys some of the stuff that we've either been spinning lately or some uh, new records that we just got for our own collection. And then we're going to rant about music genres today. Yeah. And all the different types. Danny's got a lot on the subject today about music genres. I have a lot genres. that I want to say. It's, it's a confusing thing. It's uh, more like when a... When you get into music genres. Discussion. We want to have a discussion in the comments about genres and, what do you, you know. Yeah. Sorry, Give us your opinion on that. Um, she just got her hair done today. She's looking extra. I did. Extra I did. fly. My friend Lauren did a fantastic job. Good job, Lauren. My hair. Thank you, Lauren. I approve. Amazing. I, I, uh, I'm you, a fan. You like it. It smells, smells good. I like it. It smells good. Guys, yeah. this is my natural color, too, which is crazy. Woo wee. Yeah. Want to start or you want to start? With some I'll stuff start. that we recently well, got. Okay. I'll start. Um, Danny's going to kick it off. One of her. This is not, this is not something I've recently gotten. It's something that I've had for a while now, and it is something that I've been listening to a lot lately. And this is. That. The Moody Blues. This is, and I'm going to say it, this is my number one favorite album of all time. Wow. This she is, showed this in her introduction video, but not this version. No, not this. a special version. Not the, the original master recording. This is very, I literally have. The MoFi. A, I have a, over probably a dozen copies of just this album in general because it's, there's, every collector always has. It's that good. That one album where they have numerous copies. This is this one. It's my favorite album of all time. I love the Moody Blues. They're they're up there with Bowie and The Cure for me. I mean, different different fate, different reasons for liking and putting those three together. But Would you say that this is a good album for someone that's wanting to get into the Moody Blues to start with? Absolutely. Start with this one because this is the album that really put them on the map. Um, this was probably one of the very first concept albums to be done. And the way that they did this, it was so genius. And ironically, when the Moody Blues, you know, recorded this album as a band, they were broke. That's crazy. You know, so know this really launched them. It's just a masterpiece. It's so beautiful. It gives me chills. You listen to it from start to end. And what was really cool about this is literally it goes through the, the a normal day in the life of everyday man. It starts with, you know... The day begins and then it ends with the night, which is also known as it's, Nights in White Satin, which is one of my all-time favorite songs. It's got uh, the afternoon, Tuesday, or Tuesday afternoon as I always call it. It's yeah, just, I like that song. That's a great song. It's so, it's just, oh, this is it's such a work like, of art. Uh, it's such a work of art. Everyone talks about Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, how it like takes you on like a journey. That's kind of like this one. Nailed it. You know? Yeah. That's what this one does. It takes you on a journey and I highly recommend checking this album out if you've never listened to it if you own it spin it sit down one evening and listen to it it's oh it's so good it's a good one i went on a little tangent about it i'm sorry but i love it so much uh, you're fine i love I'm it i'm on a tangent about this one i love it this fits walk among us um i had this already but i just got a copy that's still in the shrink uh it is open on the side this is the second pressing i believe uh i want to say 1988 ruby um I was just watching your foot there as it bumped the camera. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, this it, it sounds it sounds amazing. Um, spun it already, and it's it's really really great. It's got the yellow label. Uh, it's got like a fist on it there. You probably see it through the back there. Um, the first press of this is like a pink background, um, and it's extremely expensive for a first pressing of this. I want to say it's four digits easily. Uh, but this copy is still you know pretty rare, pretty valuable. Um, but it is at least affordable. Uh, a lot of great tracks on here. This one does have the insert as well. So this is basically an upgrade and then I'm going to actually sell my other copy because I don't think mine had the insert and uh, it's just a really clean copy. So I just got that 
I'm gonna show that off. What you got? Little theme here tonight, guys. This would have to be, we've got the Moody Blues again. I pretty much have every single album that they've done. Um, but A Question of Balance is like my second favorite because I love the song Question, which you've heard Question before and you probably, probably. you probably didn't know it was the Moody Blues when you heard it, but yeah, you're definitely deeper in the Moody Blues than I am, oh. but, uh, she's always I I playing it all I, the time. And, what was that movie um, where they talk about like celebrating the whole catalog? Sorry. <laughs> that's me. I celebrate his entire catalog. I, what what oh, is that movie? Office Space. That's it. Yeah. Michael talking Bolton. about Michael Bolton. Yeah. Talk that's about a, Michael Bolton. <laughs> you must really be a fan having the same name and all. <laughs> love that one. I literally, I, no, seriously, I celebrate their whole catalog. <laughs> I celebrate I their love, whole catalog. <laughs> I love them. Fantastic. I love them. I love this record. I've been listening to it a lot lately. Um, this one and Days of Future Past. Your mom's a big Moody Blues fan. So my I think that's is. like where my mom that introduced came from. me. Yes. My parents never talked about the Moody Blues. They were listening she, to like my mom. My Leonard mom. Skinner and ACDC <laughs> and Country, Conway Twitty. <laughs> my mom has this. She doesn't have the, the mo fi of it, but she does have this this album and I was just very, very grateful. For my amazing mother who raised me on the best music ever. I think we both can relate to this one. Oh my right? gosh, so many memories. This is a grail. I got a <laughs> so grail. Many Shout out to my buddy uh, James. Again, James, he's, he brings the heat sometimes. Original pressing, guys. Matchbox 20. Yes, the uh, Yourself or Someone Like You, the debut album. I remember that. Uh, one. This is the first pressing of this with the hype sticker, too. This album goes for big dollars, big dollars. It cost me a good bit of money, but I feel like I got a smoking good deal on it. Um, I was quoted from uh, another record dealer, almost $500 for this album, and I paid half that for this one. So I feel like I got a good deal on it. It's, it's in beautiful shape, VG++. Um, this album, you know, you just, it's kind of up there with the Third Eye Blind original press that I have. Like, I feel like you just kind of had to been there, you know, whenever it came out, but uh, to kind of like, it's a lot of nostalgia for me. Um, you know, I was, what year was this, 98, something like that, 98 or 99. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we were just like teenagers. So this stuff was just like, you know, all over the radio, all over MTV. Um, and I was a big fan. I was a big fan of this album. And then I kind of kind of dropped off the Matchbox 20. I had the album after this one. Um, what did it have on it? It had like, uh, Help Me, I'm Bent or something like that. That's that song. I know which one you're talking um, about. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, after that album, I kind of just fell off of the Matchbox 20 train. Got into other things, other kinds of music. But um, this album, just every track on here is just stellar. Um, I can still put this on and listen to it front to back, and it sounds as good as it did 20 years ago or whenever it came out. So that was cool. I was glad to get that on a first press. Speaking of, like, nostalgia from growing up, this is new. A new acquisition i guess is what you could say it's hoobastank the reason i love hoobastank when you were listening to like matchbox 20 i was <laughs> listening to these guys yeah I've, i never listened to hoobastank oh my gosh i missed out the reason. I, I, didn't, I wasn't even a lincoln park fan the when they came out oh. like i know i know Oof. Oh. i know that, that was i just dropped a bomb on everybody I love but that. i was like when I, when Lincoln Park was doing their thing, I was into like Warp Tour, skateboarding, Rancid, No Effects, Pennywise, Lagwagon, and I was just like, eh, you know. But <laughs> looking back, some of these bands I'm actually rediscovering. I probably would like Hoobastank really, now. Really, being in my 30s. The reason, um, <laughs> the reason this is the first time this has been pressed on vinyl. Nice. Fifteenth anniversary. anniversary. Fifteen years. That's just crazy, crazy. But I love. I mean, we were. We weren't in school when this came out, but man, I love, I can't wait to listen to this. I opened it, um, but it's a it's, colored vinyl. It's a it gateful. just came out. Like no, we just got this from I our don't... supplier. We stocked a few copies at the shop and I, I literally walked into the store and I was like, you snagged oh, one of them. that's right. I'm She's like, like, I'm like, this, this came out. This came out. <laughs> I did. I'm like shopping my store. She's known this, for that. I do it a lot. Yeah. Hey, you know, very, some you of the know, perks of owning a shop. Yeah, one of the perks. I grab a lot of stuff from there, but it's a gatefold. I love it. I can't wait to listen to it. Here's another uh, gem that I found. I went to one of my friend's record stores, and it was up on his wall. Right when I walked in, I said, that's mine, and I had to snag it. I had this CD 
uh, back, you know, when Lincoln Park was a thing. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was. Uh, we rode speaking around of Lincoln Park, in your yeah, car, we listened to that. I <laughs> speaking of Lincoln Park, when that. they were hot on the scene, I was listening to Fishbone. Yeah, you were a cool guy. A little bit of ska stuff, and this like spoke to me. Man, I love this freaking album. Freaking Freddy's Dead, Mom Pa. Hey, Mom Pa, what the hell's wrong with y'all? Remember that song? Yeah. Boning in the Boneyard. Boning in the Boneyard. Yeah, it's all right. Girl. You ever remember that song? Oh man, Fishbone was cool. But this is a 1988 first pressing, and uh, it was. I ain't never seen it on record. I've never seen it on vinyl. So I uh, grabbed that. I was like, heck yes. Um, I think I paid like 30 bucks for it. But uh, $30 well, well spent. I, I like Fishbone. I like the Boss Tones. I like a lot of the ska movement, the real big fish, all that stuff. And uh, Fishbone's one of those bands that just... Bouncing they, Souls. Bouncing Souls. We also listen to a fan. lot of bounce, the Bouncing How Souls. How I Spent My Summer Vacation, that album. We we wore that album out. Yep. Um, but nobody ever talks about Fishbone. And, and if you if you haven't listened to Fishbone, check it out. It's, it's, it's you, you almost can't even define speaking... Speaking of genres, speaking of genres, they really don't fit into uh, a certain genre. They created yeah, their own sound. You could say they're ska, but like some songs don't even sound like ska. They sound like funk, soul, R and B, hip hop, reggae. reggae. Like kind of, there's just yeah. so many different sounds. Um, their genre is Fishbone. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> there's like you know there's trumpets. There's they created their you know, own. It's I guess it's, I guess it's probably ska, reggae, rock, yeah. reggae fused rock or something. Yeah. But um, you know, they got some funky stuff, though. They really do, and they were good. Um, so I like Fishbone. Check Fishbone out if you have not listened to Fishbone. This album, and I have to, to credit my awesome little brother, not so little. He's Yeah, he's like fully grown now. He is a grown man. When we first started dating, he was just like this little kid. He was like seven. Now we've been together almost 20 years. I know. Uh, since we were 16, 17? Yeah, we've been together since we were 16 so again, years old. Your little old. brother was like six years old. Now he's like a grown college kid it's just really weird i think he was a little bit younger than that he was little because kayla my, I think be 26 or 27 time flies Crazy. i think so i don't even know how old i am half the time guys i remember the one year i swore i was turning 31 but in reality i was turning 32 and our seven-year-old was wah, arguing wah. with me he goes no mom you're gonna be 32 and i'm like no i'm not and i found out in reality <laughs> you were I was actually You had to go really, look at your birth certificate. I, no, I had to pull out my calculator <laughs> and subtract the years. And, <laughs> oh, God. What a letdown to find out you're a year older than what you thought you were. Anyways, this album right here, Polaris, The Death of Me. Um, awesome band from Australia. They're metalcore. This album right here, it's phenomenal. He, he's not really into, like, the whole, like, metalcore death metal scene i'm coming but, around but i like some of them amana marth songs that she put amana on lately. Marth is amazing i'm gonna you make gotta you love get, you gotta get drive. that ear man you gotta get the ear for the the, I the had, growling metal or whatever oh you let call me tell it. you the after the day i had today <laughs> very frustrating You're ready for the i cranked it up architects with Winston, a lot of it Parkway sounds the same Drive. to me. A lot of it sounds the same I, to me. So I got like White Chapel, Parkway ear. Drive, yeah. Gojira, all my favorites. These guys are excellent. Highly recommend checking out Polaris. The one song that I absolutely love that you really liked was Martyr. I think that's how you say it, or known as Waves. Beautiful. I mean, the way that they, the music composition is done the with twenty twenty, yeah, twenty twenty, with the singing and the swax. It's the thing with um, a lot of like metalcore bands is they're a limited edition. Yeah, well, they release limited edition presses for their albums. Like they'll release a couple of them. That's why they're 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 kind of pricey. Um, we actually got this one when we went on like um like an anniversary uh, trip. Yeah. Anniversary trip. Outside of Point Pleasant. Yeah. And yep. Look at this wax. I will say metal good. bands have the coolest pressings because they do yeah, it on this. Look at that. And I know a lot of people are like, you know, how does the how how's the sound on stuff like this? It's amazing. Depends this, on what you play it on. Right. I like to tell people that. Turn how's tables, it sound? Well, right. what are you playing well, it on? What are you playing it on? Someone's like, well, I got a Crosley, like a little old. And no I'm hating like, on the Crosley. No we hating. Got one, no hating. But but. <laughs> This it's album all... won't sound very good on that, but if you play right. it on a great turntable, it's going to sound great. So Depends on what you're playing. Okay, listen. This is my recommendation for the week. Um, this is going to be everyone's homework. 
listen to this album. It is Watch just... Watch the Polaris. It's a thing. It's a Megadeth song. A beauty. Polaris. Yeah, Polaris like is it. great. Um, a lot of really awesome metalcore bands come from Australia. So these guys are Aussie, and they're amazing, and I love them. And mad thanks to my brother, Hunter, for actually getting me hooked on this. It's so good from start to finish. Recent acquisition. I uh, bought a collection. Had some Slayer in it. Uh, kept the Slayer as well. But first pressing of Guns N' Roses' Use Your Illusion 1. That's awesome. Fantastic album. Awesome. Um, if you haven't listened to this, awesome. uh, definitely check it out. Also check out Use Your Illusion 2. Um, masterpieces in my mind. Um, when I was younger, I would hate on them a little bit because not all the songs are completely like the first album. You know, there's a lot of like m melodic ballads and stuff. You've got Live and Let Die on here, which Great is an stuff. amazing Great stuff, yeah. I mean, cover. dude, when you're, when you're young, you're just stupid. You know, yeah. I'm sorry. Like, when you're young, I, I was well, stupid. I was dumb. Well, you kind of have, like, tunnel vision. You, you tunnel only vision. like yeah. one thing. You're like, if it ain't rocking, I didn't want it. Right. You know, if I was like, you know, I was just dumb. Well, so. <laughs> and a lot of kids at that age <laughs> are, are hating on the music that they grew up listening to. I never hated the music I grew up listening to that my parents... I mean, my mom, we listened to... Look at that. Gold Stamp Promo. Gold Stamp Promo. Um... We listened to a lot of, I listened to a lot of Guns N' Roses growing up. Like, Don't Cry. I mean, that's a, you know, I used to hate on that song, but that's a great track. It's a great um, song. I think, it, I think it's got Shannon Hoon from uh, yeah. Blind Melon in that song, mm -hmm. I believe. It's got, this one is the one that has November Rain on it. November Rain, absolute masterpiece. Coma, I love Coma. No one ever talks about the song Coma, but may I tell you, it's it's a good one. It's like an underrated track. Underrated track. Yeah. Uh, first press, got that little parental advisory. It's like the sticker on there. Look at that. It's always it exciting whenever you find like an album that has that because you just don't see that. You just don't ever do see they, it. Do they put those on stuff this is the first in, in seven or eight years of us doing a store, this is the first time I've ever got a first press of this. Yeah. Um, and no, they don't actually put them on there anymore, I don't think. So that is uh, one little tip there. If you guys ever do see stuff like this, if you see a parental advisory sticker, like an actual sticker, yeah. it's probably a first pressing. Um, we have a Nine Inch Nails Downward Spiral that right. has the that I told That I actually advisor. bought from a record shop who had it priced at the, as the same price as a reissue. So I got crazy lucky on that one. Next up is this album right here, which is... It's got my favorite jam on there. It's so good. Road to Nowhere is yeah, on that one. Road to Nowhere, the very last track on, on the B-side if you've never, it's so funny, like, it's like, Talking Heads is a band you're very familiar with. You hear their songs everywhere, but there are certain ones where you didn't know that it was the Talking within Heads. The, within the past couple years, uh, one of my favorite movies is Little Monsters. Yeah. All right, guys, you guys remember Little Monsters with oh, Howie Mandel? Maurice. Plays Maurice, uh, Fred monster. Savage. The song at the end of the movie when they hit the beach. And it's like the end. And I was it's like, like as soon as it oh look, God, I'm, getting, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. That I was like, part. what is that song? It's such like a good song. And it was the Talking Heads. I had no idea. It was like, Road to Nowhere. I just and didn't I wasn't a huge Talking Heads fans heads fan when I was younger and no. I didn't know that that's who sang that, that song, but I knew that song. Yeah. And uh The Talking Heads are just such like I'm discovering how much of a of an awesome band they were, especially in, like, being so... What's the word? Sorry, guys. It's been a long day, and words are tough tonight. Um, eclectic? Not eclectic. They were pioneers for their time. Yeah. Especially right. for the certain albums that they released. It's like... I gotta dig deeper because talking about talking about Jean, Psycho Killer is one of my favorite. That's the talking. song that I, that's yeah, that's the song that I never really cared for. I love for. that song. And I was just like, I think you need talking to heads, and I like I think more. of that song, and I'm like, oh. but, but but then the Road to Nowhere, that's but the jam. At the same time, I listen to a lot of their songs from like every single album that they've put out, and it's like they they just get better and better, and they're just they're amazing. And like then I got to listen to um the Tom Tom Club more because never listened they to branched out and did the Tom Tom Club. I'm not going to get into te technical information. I'm sure one of y'all will say something in the comments, but <laughs> they're great. I love that album. It's so good. Gypsy in the Garden. Uh just picked this up. Don't know nothing about it. Looks Tell like, me something about like it. It looks like good psych rock to me. <laughs> it looks like good psych rock to me. Yeah, this is a Gypsy in the Garden. Uh, literally just got this like a week ago. Um, I forget where I got this. Oh, I got it at a flea market. I was at a flea market and, uh, I had never seen it before. So I grabbed it and, uh, I think it is like, you know, classic psych rock. Um, some great artwork on here. It reminds me of like King Crimson. 
yeah. looking, looking artwork here. Or like Gentle Giant. Yeah. So like I've never heard of them. Both, and, I love both King Crimson yeah. and Gentle Giant. So, so I'll show you guys that. I mean, I'm sure it's like psychedelic prog, maybe. I don't know. They usually kind of went like. with like a standard. Um, okay, next up for me is this album right here, Robert Plant, Now and Zen. I love Robert Plant, and I don't know if I've ever told you this, but my mom had this tape. And I believe she had this record when I was growing up. And I listened to Led Zeppelin all the time. And I listened to Robert Plant all the time. But being little, I never knew that this guy was the singer of Led Zeppelin. Not until I got much older did yeah, I realize. Because, was, yeah. but at the same time, but at the same time, I'm just, well, it's the same thing. Like, I listened to a lot of Joe Walsh. My mom loved Joe Walsh, the James Gang, the Eagles. But I never knew Joe Walsh, like his solo stuff that we had at home. I never knew, oh, that's the same guy from the Eagles. It's like, right. when you're little, you don't realize these things. But anyways, this album is so good. And especially with songs like Tall Cool One, it's so many, like, awesome throwbacks to, like, Led Zeppelin's signature sound. And that's why I think I like his solo stuff so much is because he doesn't, he, he has his own unique sound with it, but he still goes back to, like, his Led Zeppelin roots, in my opinion. Yeah. And it's like, just like a little bit of more 80, 80s, heaven knows, 80s fight or whatever it, you want to call it. It was it definitely did with the era and he did it so well. Yeah. And I love Robert Plant. He's one of my favorite people. It's not actually, polished. Sound. It's not quite as raw as Zeppelin, but it's more polished synth synthesizers, maybe like, uh, you know, it just, drums a little I bit. I mean, this album came out in 88. So he really played well with the era of that time and was able to kind of, I don't know, like this solo album was so good. I love Robert Plant. We saw him in concert a few years ago, and I kid you not, for the age that that man is, he still sounds so good. That, that was a bucket list for me. But I love this album. It still holds its own to this day. I mean, I could listen to it, and I still love it just as much. Speaking of the Boss Tones, Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, this is Don't Know How to Party, and Scott Core the Devil and more. Um, I want to say, so I don't know much. if this is a first pressing, but this is definitely a vintage pressing. Um, I was at a record store somewhere in Maryland. My buddy and I, we were kind of freestyling one day. Stopped in at this store, and they had this there. It was in, like, the new arrivals, and I was like, what? And it came with, uh, well, obviously the album. Still in the uh, lyric sheets there. But then I think it has a colored 10-inch of Scott Core, The Devil, and More, which is a CD I had. Oh, look when at I, that. Yeah, no, ain't that sweet? It's like two-tone. Yeah. That's awesome. It's a CD I had uh, when I was in high school. I, lived, I just wore it out. I had this album. I had all the Ballstons albums. I went through a phase where I had to get like every Ballstons album because I was just obsessed with them. We seen them live with the Dropkick Murphys. They were just what like the so energy. great. The energy from so that much show. energy. And um, on this pressing here, I already have a music on vinyl uh, release of this album here. But uh, I guess I'm probably gonna sell that one because it's just this album. So this is actually, you know, both albums together. That's so I really thought that was cool. a great set, and uh, I picked that up. Fantastic album, by the way. Like, they, they had a couple singles on here, Don't Know How to Party. Um, always remembered on the Ska Core, The Devil More, that song Lights Out. It just, like, really rocks. That's a rocks. great one. That's a really great one. really rocks. And I always thought it was really interesting that uh, the Balls Tones, they could, they could kind of hang with, like, almost any band of the genres at the time because, uh, like... On, on the inner, on the inner flap of the CD, I remember there was a Guar, like they were playing a show with Guar, like there was a flyer That's on the cool. inside. I was like, Boss That's Tones cool. played with Guar. That like, would have been an awesome show. That would have been a crazy to. show. Like that would have been. Someone, fun. yeah, someone out there in YouTube Lance was probably, probably there. Probably went. To that Tell way. us how it was. <laughs> I'd love to hear it. What else you got there? Okay, I'm gonna do like a a, a twofer. Do a twofer there. I'm gonna do a twofer. Um, do a twofer. <laughs> um, two of my top favorite Pink Floyd albums. Um, this one is open. I just haven't that taken... That one's a recent acquisition, I it would is. say. It is. Well, it's not... Blue it's vinyl. Within the, within the past year or so, Pink Floyd Division Bell, one of my favorite albums. Probably my top favorite Pink Floyd album. Team Gilmore. And then, absolutely Team Gilmore. <laughs> and then um, Metal, which... Beautiful copy of Metal. Metal is such an underrated album, and it doesn't get the love that it deserves. I mean... Fearless and Echoes, I mean, Echoes alone, it gets its own side because it's literally one. It's like a bunch of songs mixed into one, but it's such, like, both masterpieces here. 
Um, I'm going to do a Pink Floyd video because I love them so much. Show off our Pink Floyd collection. And I would pretty, love pretty to show collection. off my massive Floyd collection because it's so good. Okay. I'll do it too for real quick because yep. uh, we're trying to keep the video under 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, and we grabbed too many albums, as always. We did. Uh, I was I was at my buddy's shop the other week, and uh, Sonny Boy rotations. Williamson. Yeah, the Real Folk <laughs> Blues. That's right. Real Folk Blues. Uh, this was up on his wall. It's original first press, 1966. That's cool. Um, great blues artist. I actually have a 78 of Sonny Boy William uh, Williamson. And um, the 78's great. Like, I, I spun it, and it, it was great. It's actually worth a lot of money. Um, that's how I actually learned of this artist, was that I found, a, found one of his on 78 which was wild. And then so when I seen the LP, Ooh. I had to have it. Music genre rant. Okay. It's time. Um, and this kind of stemmed from an interaction I had with someone in a group on Facebook. I had mentioned that um, I, I loved this band. Well, it was Gojira. And I said, they're an awesome death metal band. And someone commented, they're not really death metal. And I'm thinking... It got me to the point where I'm just like, okay, but what what do you consider death metal? And and also at the same time, are is genre a majority of the time opinion based? Because very opinion based. You know, you have a band like Pink Floyd, which could be considered prog, but I've also seen them considered math rock. So it, Metallica. That's a rarely used term, math right. rock. But there's, it is a thing. <laughs> it, it is very much a thing. A lot of um, a lot of like death metal metalcore bands. There's 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 math math metal um there's there's deathcore there's metalcore there's black metal there's um they could be sim cool. there's there's symphonic death metal there's melodic death metal um thrash there's there's thrash there's speed metal there's there's metalcore there's grindcore there's sludge metal <laughs> um i'm not kidding guys it's there's, just starting to sound stupid lot, right there's now there's a lot of subgenres <laughs> and and, it's and metal and it's but at the same time, it's the same thing with new wave. There's like new wave. There's dark wave. There's post punk. I never knew there was a thing called dark wave. That's a new dark one wave to me. is awesome. That's like, like what? That's like Bauhaus. But somebody's probably gonna pop in the comments. Bauhaus isn't dark wave. Post -punk. But then, but then -punk I, I tell you, there's there's goth punk. Yeah. There's uh, uh, honestly like I really music is music. Music is music. But at the same time, you have a band like Pink Floyd. They've created their own genre. They have their own sound. Yeah. Their genre is Pink Floyd because I honestly can't think of another band that sounds like them. But then it's like we go to Metallica. When Metallica first came out on the scene, they were thrash. But if you look at albums like the Black, well, Black, I call it the Black Album. Everybody does. And yeah. like Garage, Garage Inc., it's more heavy metal. And they no longer fit into the thrash yeah. Commercial metal, maybe. Or well, maybe just hard rock. Because load, load and reload, a lot of people would consider them. I don't consider them hard, hard rock. Hard rock. I consider them what everybody said. Would you call would them heavy metal? Heavy metal. I could see that. Or metal. But when they got really commercial, like Dio. Dio is like not hard rock. Hero. Dio, Dio hero. Is metal. What is it? Hero for the day. Hero of the day. Yeah. Uh, that sounds like hard rock. Or moth into a flame. Well, that's way new. No, that's newer. But so like, I don't know. Unforgiven like, would be like hard rock. I guess it's metal. I don't, I don't know. I don't like genres, really. I mean, it I like. It kind of puts things into a box when you should be like free thinking. Uh, I like like almost calling them by the decade. Yeah, right. that's like. Like, look at Bowie. That's, that's '90s rock. Bowie. Or that's '90s metal. That's '80s metal. Right. That's '70s hard rock ish metal. Black Bowie Sabbath, went into whatever. a bunch of different genres. Bowie had. I mean, there was a time where Bowie was like kind of new wave and certain. Yeah. Like I, I think it. You really you have to go based on the album. Even if you check on like Discogs, the genres are different sometimes. Like well, you'll sometimes have an album. They'll have like four or five different they'll ones. They'll have like different categories. Together. Like, yeah, it'll have the like the same uh, album. Like Fishbone, for example. Uh, if it's listed in a couple different categories, one might say ska punk, one might say reggae funk, you know, whatever. So it's right. like even even they don't even know. Like, who, like whoever puts the listings together. Or like people like. Pink Floyd might say classic rock or might say prog. Or know? like people it's, like uh, Kate Bush is like art wave. Art wave. Um, That's there's annoying. also I can't keep um, up, man. There's also um what was that that genre? Um shoegaze. Shoegaze is another one that's, that's new, new to yeah, me. That's another new I one. love like I'm, alternative I'm, indie. It's well it's more like well it's like um slow dive, um cocteau twins, Jesus and the Mary Chain, um just a lot of lot of bands like that that yeah. kind of have the ethereal 
It's very like mm. an, an ethereal, yeah. ethereal wave. I think ethereal wave is a genre. I'm not 100 percent sure. <laughs> I've seen that term used, ethereal, because that's like the sound. But it's like it's confusing me. I just don't want to be talking to someone or post something and be like, "This is my favorite new wave album." Something's like. That's not new wave. Oh, and someone's That's always gonna have something to say. Punk. Someone's always gonna have something to say. And, it's like and, punk, it, and as I, a band evolves yeah. throughout the time of their career, absolutely, their sounds change. Like look at right. Taylor Swift; she started off as country, then she went pop, and now she's like folk. Look at the the Clash, first album, punk. What would Joe Strummer and like, the Escaleros? Well, what the, well, the, genre well, the is fourth, that? The, by the third or fourth Clash album, is it still punk? Like it, to I me, I mean, you're punk. talking like you know, Ivan meets GI Joe. Like they created their own. Sound. You listen to, yeah, that, I mean, that's like that yeah. was like new wave. Like it was funky. What's they had some reggae stuff. What's in there. rancid considered? Well, if you look at the early albums, punk. It's punk. But right? as it progressed, it's still kind of punk. But and then, like, you know, then you, <laughs> some well, some people would say pop punk. <laughs> you know, but it's that's like, like what rancid. happened to Green Day. Green Day punk, pop, and then it was right. like, oh, they're pop band now. Like uh, people, but, it's just, I don't know. I think it's just like. uh I don't know. And then there are people who will think that grunge doesn't isn't really a thing. Yeah, grunge ain't a well. That's because a lot of the like, um, a lot of these artists from that era don't like the word grunge. You know, Pearl Jam. I think even Eddie Vedder said he didn't like the word grunge or something. Well, that's like uh, Cinderella. So, Tom Kiefer hates the term. I call it hair metal, but he hates the term hair band. Yeah. If you ask Tom <laughs> Kiefer what genre Cinderella is, he will say no and no Hard way. Rock. In no way right. are they a hair band. They're know. not a hair band. But at the same time, it's like Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam. Alice in Chains is a hard one to uh, put a you know put a tag on. You can't label them because. Would you call them metal? Would you call them no hard rock? Would you call them grunge? No. Like it's like the Moody they're Blues. They're so great. I just call them awesome. But at the same no. time, could you look at them and say were they progressive in a way? Progressive rock metal. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Like, seriously. Alice in Chains, what do you think? Pink Floyd, what do you think? Right. Uh, what's the another Moody band? Moody Blues is progressive psych Moody Blues, rock, what do you I think? think? I think the right, Moody so Blues is one of the very of first progressive bands along with King Crimson. Okay. And Gentle Giant. Yeah. Yes. Yes, definitely Prague. Um, I would think. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. <laughs> depends on who you Prague. ask. Yeah, I mean, on it, or it depends on the to, album to, that we're uh, talking about. To the old guy that listened to... Uh, the Look at new, Ministry! Look at Ministry! Like, they started just, out as yeah. new wave pop, and they're like industri industrial metal. Yeah. They're more industrial like Nine Inch Nails. Nine Inch Nails got their inspiration from Ministry. To the to the guy that's probably listened to more Yes albums than I ever have in my life. Right. Like when I go buy a collection from somebody, I'll meet an older gentleman I love who yes. probably listened to the Yes albums way more than I did. For like 10 CC. He calls them classic rock. I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, you know I'll take that because it, he was there. He lived like, through it. Like you know, like I buy these people's albums all the time, and like they're like I've had this since I was sixteen. You know, so like when I hear them say you know this is classic rock to me, like yeah, I feel like his opinion matters more than mine because I wasn't there. Right. So okay, they were classic rock. And I think as as time goes on, <laughs> he was people, there. <laughs> people want to want so badly to label something, so they will create these right. extra genres just so they I think can it's put gotten out of in hand. a box. I think the genres have gotten out of hand. Metal. Metal um, is crazy. When you come to our store, it's like we got an A through Z and it's like rock pop. That's it. It's like rock and, pop. And You'll find everything special, in there. There are special artists that I think deserve their own sections, <laughs> yeah. like Bowie, the Beatles. Yeah, but Bowie's Queen. in the rock pop. Beatles is in the rock pop. Metallica is in the metal section. Yeah. Uh, Green Day is in the rock pop. Uh, the jazz, jazz has its own section. Reggae yeah. has its own section. Hip-hop's got its own section. But when it comes to the rock pop, you're getting the alternative, the grunge, the it's all. hard rock. The... Unless it's reggae or rap, it's yeah. it's, it's so, all in there. That's our rant for today, guys. Um, it's just frustrating. It's annoying, you know, especially when somebody tries to argue with you on what a certain genre. I that's think not death metal. It's, it's, it, it's, <laughs> they it's don't all sing based about death. on your opinion. Do they, do, they to, do they have to sing about death to be death no, metal? I, no, I think okay. it's, it's all like... I'm not sure about that. I think it's mm. all based, in my opinion... Somebody's probably going to say I'm wrong. And, oh, and guaranteed. I don't... This is, this is stirring the pot right now. This is stirring the pot. This is stirring the pot. Like, somebody's somebody's, like somebody's like boiling right pot. now. They're just like, oh, oh I'm going to tell these mother that from now. I'm going to let Somebody's going to come on here and be like, <laughs> y'all are a joke. Y'all are real. Anyway, let us know your thoughts. It's just been on my mind. And I just want to say, hey, yeah. guys, I just feel like I can be honest with you because you a majority of you are respectful we're, we're enough over. are respectful enough to say what's right. Not what's Well, right. no one's ever right. It's not, just, it's opinion. not not to say what's right, yeah. but to say, hey, this is my two cents on the subject that you talked about. There you go. 
Let us know what you think. Yep. Music genres. Has it gotten out of hand? Or do you guys like having 18,000 different genres? Right. Let us know. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, we will come, be coming at you again with a rans another Ransom Rotations. Hey, what should we rant about next? Yeah, Let what, us what know. Should we about? Let us know. What do you think? We, we should read the about? comments. We absolutely do. It gives he us responds. Fuel. It gives us he fuel. responds. I don't, unless they're nice. <laughs> I'll respond to you if you leave a nice comment. If there you, you leave a mean comment, he gets it because I'll, I'll, I'll rip you a new one. Anyway, we're back to the media, <laughs> Winchester, Virginia. Check us out uh, if you're ever in Virginia. And please like uh, and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And hit the notifications bell there you so go. you get notified every single time we post a new video. If you like uh, what we do, you want to support what we do, support our brand. Uh, we do a live record auction every sun i'm sorry every saturday night 7 p.m 7 p.m eastern, eastern on our standard facebook time page. on our facebook page we go live we start records off at a yep. dollar it's a lot of fun everybody's a big family there it's entertaining. um and you can support us support what we do yep. and uh we'd love to see you around thanks for watching thanks guys bye